Good afternoon, everyone. By the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates and friends of the Open University, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the sixth of the Open University's degree ceremonies that are being held in 2017. We are particularly delighted to welcome the Mayor and Mayoress of the Borough of Harrogate, Councillor Nick Brown and Mrs. Linda Brown, who have found time in their very, very busy diaries to be with us today. And I gather the Mayor has only two more days in office, so he tells me he's gonna make sure he enjoys himself today. It's also a particular pleasure to welcome our honorary graduate, Lord David Blunkett. We are delighted to be able to honor him today. During the past year, the Open University has awarded over 20,000 qualifications, ranging from the Certificate of Higher Education right through to a Doctor of Philosophy. Throughout 2017, more than 8,000 graduates are being presented for their qualifications at degree ceremonies such as the one today here in Harrogate. They are held in 13 different towns and cities throughout England and also in Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh and Dublin. This illustrates the extraordinary scale, scope and reach of the Open University. It goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of you, our graduates, your families and loved ones, as well as the university staff who, I hope you feel, have nurtured and supported you through your learning journey. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn, but you'd be quite wrong, because in every day, this is a day of celebration. So, I'm gonna be very disappointed if there's anyone that comes across the stage th today and gets anything less than thunderous applause, or whatever other way you choose to express your enthusiasm and support, and I'll leave that up to your imagination. Uh, now, the mayor was also telling me over lunch that he came a year ago, and he had a fantastic time and was tremendously impressed with the enthusiasm of the audience, okay? Uh, as people got their awards and qualifications conferred upon them. So I've taken that as a bit of a challenge because if he's got two days left to go in his term of office, I think we need to show him that we can do even better than happened 12 months ago. So I'm relying on everyone here to do lots of cheering, shouting, stomping, waving around, calling out to your relatives, friends, and anything else that adds to the occasion. So with that in mind, first of all, why don't all of today's graduates briefly stand for us, please? Okay, up you come. So friends, families, and OU staff, let's start off today's ceremony by giving all of our amazing graduates one huge round of applause, please. So um, that's the kind of occasion we want it to be. Lots of cheering, lots of clapping, uh, an informal celebration of everybody and their marvelous achievements. And there's one more way that you can show your appreciation to your graduate. If you post messages or photos on social media, use the hashtag OU underscore ceremonies. So, Instagram, tweet, Facebook, whatever it might be, sharing your congratulations and celebrations with the world outside, as well as with everyone else here at the ceremony. 
Today's ceremony will begin with a presentation of those graduates who have gained higher degrees and first degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Laws and who have been able to attend here today. They will be presented by Mr. Billy Coker, Head of Student Support in Academic Services. We will then see the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Lord David Blunkett. My colleague, Dr. Rif Richard Heffernan, Reader in Government in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, will present David Blunkett, who will sign the honorary graduate's book. And he will ma then make a reply. Then we will continue our presentation of graduates with those who have gained Bachelor of Science, foundation degrees and diplomas of higher education and have been able to attend here today. To conclude the ceremony, I'll give you a personal address to all those graduating today. So rather like a good teacher, hopefully, I'll summarize what I've just said and emphasize the key learning point. Okay. Okay. Which is that the ceremony is about marking this special occasion for our friends and colleagues and making sure we enjoy the afternoon. Okay, so I think, I hope I've given you a very, very clear message about how we're to enjoy ourselves this afternoon. I now call upon Mr. Coker to present the graduates. Executive Dean, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Master of Arts in Art History, I present Margaret Lightowler. <laughs> William Messer. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Tina Naples. <laughs> Maria Peacock. For the degree of Master of Arts in History, I present Gillian Anderson. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Philosophy, I present John Campbell. Ashley Elliott. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Dawn Hemmings. Karina Thomas. <laughs> Joanne Wilson. <laughs> For
For the degree of Master of Business Administration Technology Management, I present Clive Knight. For the degree of Master of Education, I present James Gilmore. <laughs> Rosemary O'Leary. <laughs> Simon Pierce. Ali Hassan. <laughs> Amy Rimmer. Kate Stewart. <laughs> Nicholas Wales. Kathleen Thomas. For the degree of Master of Laws, I present Christina Aston. For the degree of Master of Science in Advancing Healthcare Practice, I present Victoria Cartwright. For the degree of Master of Science in Earth Science, I present Gordon Skates. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Science, I present Jonathan Taylor. Executive Dean, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Law degrees, and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with first class honors, Steve Hopker.
For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, I present Julie Adams. Paula Mae Batson. Ian Beavers. <laughs> Joshua Chandler. Florence Tashimba. <laughs> Ian Coach Heffer. Claire Cotton. <laughs> Leanne Craven. Susan Isherwood. <laughs> Antonietta La Monica. <laughs> Charlotte Lote. Tina Markey. <laughs> Jerry Morong. Carol Mercer. <laughs> Ray.
Rachel Moles. Holly Percival. <laughs> Laura Tattersall. Layla Temporal. <laughs> Lisa Todd. Haley Whitehead. <laughs> Anam Zulfikar. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Tim Blackford. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Social Work with first class honors, I present Tracy Williams. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Social Work with Honours, I present Julie Allison. <laughs> Carol Arthur. <laughs> Tara Fisher. <laughs> Paula Siddle. Linda Story. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with First Class Honours, I present Samuel Bridger.
Mark Jordan. Paul Smith. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, I present David Allen. Kelvin Atkinson. Andrew Foley. Mark Hudson. <laughs> Graham Little. Lisa Pape. <laughs> Jordan Robottom. Christos Viliotis. <laughs> Maxwell Waddingham. Mark Wheatman. <laughs> Christopher Whiteley.
Olivia Young. And for the degree of Bachelor of Laws with Honours, I present Deborah Wilkinson. My name is Richard Heffern and I have the pleasure to teach politics at the Open University. I'd like to say before I make, offer my remarks to say what a pleasure it is for those of us who have the privilege to teach at the university to see you conclude your journey, because whatever we do, it is your journey, and, uh, and we're all very proud of you. Uh, Executive Dean, colleagues, graduates and guests, David Blunkett has served his community and his country for more than 45 years in an extraordinary political career achieved against all odds. Born and raised in Sheffield, blind from birth, David experienced hardship as a child, compounded after his father's death in an industrial accident. He was educated in schools for the blind and attended night school classes in order to pass the necessary examinations to study at the University of Sheffield. He earned a BA in political theory and began teaching politics and, international, and industrial relations. He joined the Labour Party aged 16, and in 1970 was elected Sheffield's youngest ever city councillor. By 1980, he was leader of the council. In 1983, he was elected to Labour's National Executive Committee, and under Neil Kinnock, John Smith, and Tony Blair, he was a strong supporter and advocate of efforts to modernise the party. David was first elected to Parliament in 1987 as the member for Sheffield Brightside, and as Labour's local government spokesperson, he led the party's critique of the poll tax. He served in the shadow cabinet and held the, ed the health, education and employment portfolios and was then chair of the party. When Labour came to office in 1997, David became education and employment secretary in Tony Blair's first cabinet tasked with delivering the party's top three priorities, which Tony Blair had described the opposition as being education, education, education. Cutting class sizes in primary schools, focusing on standards in literacy and numeracy, and founding the Sure Start program. David was also responsible for employment policy, establishing Job Center Plus, introducing the Learning and Skills Council, and setting up commissions to promote disability rights, equal opportunities, and, la and racial equality. When Labour was returned to office at the 2001 election, David was promoted to Home Secretary. And at the Home Office, he addressed public concerns about crime and immigration, whilst responding, responding to post-9-11 security and counter-terrorism challenges. He brought in extensive reforms of the criminal justice system, including tougher sentences for sex offenders, introducing the concept of consent, and sweeping away outdated legal restrictions on gay and lesbian people. 
He introduced the double jeopardy law, enabling a second trial in cases where there is new and extensive evidence. He also served as Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. As a Labour backbencher, David worked on a range of issues relating to welfare reform and social mobility, education in the voluntary sector, and policing and cyber security. After 28 years as a Member of Parliament, he stood down at the 2015 general election and entered the House of Lords. David has supported many local and national charities, including the Royal National Institute for Blind People, the Alzheimer's Society, and the Micro and Anophthalmatic Children's Society. He is currently, far from retired, he is a professor in practice at politics, the pro professor in the practice of politics at the University of Sheffield, and he's also contributed to one of our own open university publications, Losing Political Office, about life for people after they stop being a member of parliament. Admired by politicians of all parties for extraordinary ded dedication, tireless work ethic, and his mastery of detail, David has been one of the most respected and influential politicians of recent years. David Cameron, when Prime Minister, spoke for all sides of the House of Commons when he described David as a remarkable politician and a remarkable man. It is an honor for me and for the university to recognize David's lifetime of service to British politics and to pay some small tribute to the enormous inspiration his public service has given to, pe pe to people everywhere. Executive Dean, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University Lord David Dunkett. He gets a doctorate. <laughs> I promise I shall be um, brief. It's your day. Congratulations to all those graduating today and to those who have tutored them and congratulations to the families because I think you'll have had to have put up with a lot of um, hassle and uh, missed weekends and evenings when you'd prefer to have been doing something really exciting. Uh, I know that because my first wife Ruth, I, I've only had two wives and the second one's here, I ought to just stress that. Um, <laughs> My first wife, Ruth, got a, an open university degree uh, when our first son was very small and was able to study whilst uh, supporting him, and it has to be said, me. And my cousin taught um, art at the university and was very privileged to do the summer school, some of them in wonderful places like Florence. And I thought to myself at the time, Maybe I ought to join the Open University uh, and do that as well. What a terrific history the Open University has. You saw at the beginning of the film this afternoon the words of Harold Wilson, the, uh, the Prime Minister-to-be. Back in Easter 1963, he first had this idea and tested it out with his family in Huddersfield. I've got to be very careful. I have difficulty saying Huddersfield this week because Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield were in the playoffs. I knew there'd be some Huddersfield supporters uh, here and I was there and I promise you it was excruciating. 
um, uh, in Huddersfield back in Easter 63. It took time, as things often do in politics, to bring that to fruition, to the legislation in 67 when Harold Wilson was in his second term as Prime Minister, to uh, start the formal provi provision of the university in, uh, in 1969. It's very rich on my heart because, it's, as Richard's mentioned, I had to go to evening school and day release to get my qualifications to get to university. And I, I got to Easter 1963, and because of the, the man, I nearly called him something, but he's long dead, so we mustn't speak ill of the dead. The man who was the principal of the school for the blind I went to, didn't believe that blind children should take uh, open qualifications. And therefore, none of us had a single qualification to our name. And at that point, like so many of you, I decided that education was the ladder both out of poverty and the window that would open on the world. And if I got off my bum and did something about it, then there was a potential, just the beginnings of a potential, I might make something of myself and contribute to the wider world. And through those evening classes, just as you've taken online these days, I think some of you call yourselves wikis. Is that, is that the expression, wikis? And join up. And through the important element of the seminars and tutorials, the face-to-face, -face, through those years and through your years, it was possible to gain the qualifications to make a difference and I hope in my case to be able to change the world for the better. The greatest pleasure of my life was to become Education and Employment Secretary. Richard, and, and people do talk like this, so this is not a knock at Richard. Um, Richard said that I was promoted to Home Secretary in 2001. I didn't think it was promotion and when I got in there I realised it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was a bed of nails. The reason education and employment was so close to my heart was not just because I'd cared about it. I got a postgraduate qualification in teaching. God help me, it was from Huddersfield, actually. Um, uh, but because education is, for so many, the liberator. It changes life chances. It opens up opportunity, not just for the first time, but again and again through life. And one of the sadnesses of the last five years has been the enormous drop in the number of part-time students right across the higher education sector, but also, obviously, with the Open University. The future will depend on progression in work. Post-Brexit, people will take jobs that they really don't want to do. They'll have a lousy start, but they'll have the opportunity, I hope, of growing and developing in work changing jobs, taking on new challenges throughout what will be a prolonged working life. And the Open University has, and I hope in future will play, the most important part in making that progression possible for everyone. Linking between what the Open University now does with the digital platforms, with the desire of employers to see their employees develop and be able to use the new opportunities that will be in front of us. It's, um, of course, in the middle of a general election. I just cross myself at this point. I hope that in the next three weeks, there will be the opportunity for all the main political parties to start debating how this university and others can create new ways of encouraging people to take on higher education, to be able to engage in part-time study, to be able to develop what others talk about, but you need to actually practice. And I hope that we'll have education, education, education back on the agenda, not just with wiping out fees for full-time students or talk of grammar schools, but a genuine connection and debate between the parties on the way education needs to develop. When I started out, it was Betamax um, DVDs. Uh, now, of course, with the digital platform, you have the most op enormous opportunities, but also challenges to get people to understand 
that it's not just about tapping in on the web. It's about the importance of learning how to study, learning how to learn. And of course, Richard mentioned Jane's Ro Ro Jane Roberts' book undertaken with the Open University, to which I contributed, about the way in which people leaving political office are often dismissed and forgotten. Now, we say in the book, and I said to Jane, nobody's going to shed any tears, although there'll be a lot of sheer tears shed on June the 9th by many people from different parties and their families. But to use experience to develop from that knowledge gained, to be able to learn from each other, is a critical part of the mission of the Open University. And I think those values need to be espoused. And whilst politics often has a bad name, it's politics, democratic politics, that really changes the world for the better. I knew an old guy called Rabbi Lionel Blue. Some of you will have heard him on Thought for the Day on Radio 4. He died last year. He gave me permission to use a, a little story which sums up my values and I think sums up what all of you have been doing. It was about Reuben, whose uh, business had gone bust and whose house was being repossessed. And he goes down to the synagogue on a Saturday and he prays to the Lord that he should win the lottery. And after six weeks, the Lord has had enough of this. And a booming voice come down from above. Reuben, my boy, the Lord helps those who help themselves. And Reuben said, but Lord, what is it you want me to do? And the Lord said, for God's sake, buy a ticket. <laughs> and the lesson of your lives and of my life is... You need a helping hand, all of us do. Mutuality and reciprocity need to be writ large. But you need to buy the ticket before you stand the 45 million to one chance of winning it. <laughs> you've bought the ticket, you've won the lottery, make the most of it for the rest of your lives. Thank you very much. Indeed. Executive Dean, continuing the presentation of graduates, I shall now present those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education, and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with First Class Honours, I present Louisa Briggs. Lee Glossop. <laughs> Lorna Grandage. Paul John. Christopher Jones.
Victoria Probert. Anna Rostron. <laughs> Paul Roddis. Helen Thatcher. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with honors, I present Philippa Bell. Safia Bibi. <laughs> Laura Bracker. Steve Brett. <laughs> Sarah Calvert. Carol Campbell. <laughs> Ian Clegg. <laughs> Jason Cooper <laughs> Zoe Cupid Haley Dean.
Nicola Dinsdale. Ian Edmondson. <laughs> Victoria Fennell. John Gaunt. Paul Graham. James Hind. Helen Hitchcock. James Holt. Michelle Hopkinson. Stephen Howey. <laughs> Sally Hughes. Nicole Jones. <laughs> Stephen Kirby. Jane Land. <laughs> Jane, 
Dawn Langley. Pamela Mez. <laughs> Sarah Makinson. Jonathan Mazirisa. <laughs> Stuart McGowan. Marie Milne. <laughs> Catherine Murray. Jess Miles. <laughs> Bianca Nunari. Chukunoye Obasi. David Pearson. <laughs> Emily Rushton. Liam Selman. <laughs> B. 
Brownie Shirley. Katie Simpson. <laughs> Mojisola Smith. Rodora Snowden. <laughs> Susan Todd. Patricia Turton. Tristan Tyson. <laughs> Simon Walgate. Matthew Watson Walker. Lauren White. Neil Williams. <laughs> Rosie Wynn. And for the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Sasha Cohen Chowdhury. <laughs> Taslima Farouk. Ian Ferguson. <laughs> Craig Lawrence.
Dauda Musa. Jonathan Osborne. Well Angela Riding. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing with first class honours, I present Claire Atkin Palmer. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing with Honours, I present Dawn Caveney. <laughs> Keely Clayden. Sue Compton. <laughs> Rowena Falkingham. Joanne Gosling. <laughs> Jennifer Jones. Lucia Lepidi. <laughs> Jade McCambridge. Christine Miller. <laughs> Amelia Mudd. Paula Naylor. <laughs> Angela Phillips.
Charlotte Ridgedale. Victoria Scott. Abigail Searles. <laughs> Kerry Walton. Helen Williams. <laughs> Debbie Wilson. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, Mental Health Nursing, with honors, I present Jill Dale. Heather Darley. <laughs> Tracy Swallow. For a foundation degree, I present Thomas Armstrong. <laughs> Ashley Mason. Gillian Parking. <laughs> Carl Van Niekerk. Kerry Veer Smith.
And for the Diploma of Higher Education, I present Theophilus Tycho. Well, I think the first thing to say about all that is what an incredible and amazing bunch of people I've just had the honour and privilege of meeting. I think I can't even remember the list of, off the top of my head of all the different fields of work and life that people are in, but I think there was firemen, mental health nurses, nurses, business people, IT, military, it was it's always humbling and amazing to be the person congratulating you on such fantastic achievements. So well done, everybody. Guests, members of Senate, staff, and of course, our wonderful graduates. This has been a very special day for everyone here, one that hopefully you will remember for the rest of your lives. Um, Honestly, I find these occasions very moving because I think they really are remarkable achievements that you've all had. And, you know, how fantastic that your friends and family can be here to celebrate with you. Wonderful, inspiring stories from everyone. The joy and enthusiasm of an open university degree is truly fantastic and inspiring, frankly. Um, and I think I probably managed to sign up a few people for some more courses whilst I was up there, so that was even better. Um, each and every one of you is extraordinary. Together, you are even more extraordinary. You are the most amazing body of graduates anywhere in the UK. In fact, today, all of you, your friends and supporters, are probably sharing this auditorium with the most extraordinary people you're ever likely to meet. For friends, family, and supporters that have come here today, you know the incredible efforts that your graduate went to in achieving their qualification. But many of you, and many of our graduates today, won't know very much about our other graduates and just how amazing you are as a body. So I'd like to take a moment to try and find out a little bit more about us. So I'm going to ask the graduates that have come across the, the stage today a few questions so we can all discover a bit more about you. Okay, so this is going to be another teach, teacher classroom exercise, I'm afraid. One more final one, which is going to involve you raising your hands. Okay, so it's not too difficult. No online stuff. Okay, just raising your hands. So, whilst you were studying, during the period of your study, who was either employed or did voluntary work? Almost everyone. Who helped bring up a family during the period of your study? A very sizable number. Who cared for parents, grandparents, or other dependents during the period of your study? A not insignificant number. Don't put up your hand if this will be tricky for you, but who carried out their studies whilst registered with a disability? A There's a few people I can see. Some disabled students naturally can't come to um, ceremonies like this, but you'll be interested to know that the university has over 24,000 disabled students, not only more than any other university, in fact, the number of our disabled students is bigger than some other universities in total. Um, and that's an incredible reflection on the power of the Open University. So as you've just seen, almost every student here has needed to fulfill some other obligation alongside their study 
compare that with students at conventional universities whose extra duties might take them to the rugby team or football team or indeed their commitment to the student bar. Your efforts are so much greater. You are members of a university that believes that where you start in life shouldn't limit where you go. Let me share a frustration I have with you over the use of the term that describes students like you. Conventional students at conventional universities are described as full-time students. And OU students are sometimes described as part-time. Well, your lives certainly aren't part-time, are they? More like double-time students when you're juggling family life, caring, work, and all the other things that go to make up a rich adult life of the kind of things I've heard about this afternoon. But there's only one thing tougher than being an OU student, and that's living with one. <laughs> and so many of you, as you came across the stage, quite rightly pointed out, or in some cases jumped up and down at, your friends and family members, and it showed just how much your achievement belonged to them as it does to you. So, graduates, can I ask you to take a moment to acknowledge the support of your family and friends who are celebrating with you today. They've been by your side every step of the way. So let's thank them for supporting you, for standing by you. So can you all try and locate your friends and family in the crowd? Remember, we do things a bit informally here at the OU, so don't stand on ceremony. They're all waving. And give them a massive cheer, massive thank you. And I'm pretty sure I'm speaking on behalf of everyone who's just received an award that they feel that they couldn't have done it without your support. So thank you very much. Can we also thank that other group, vital group that helped you get here today? And that's the Open University's wonderful academics and tutors represented by my colleagues on the platform. The uh, university academics write and present your modules and qualifications. And crucially, the tutors or associate lecturers as we call them, who help tutor you and get you through your course. So I hope you'll agree that they too are deserving of a huge round of applause and a show of appreciation. <laughs> you are all absolutely special but you're also special because of the quality and the extraordinariness, frankly, of the university that you have just graduated from and the standards that we set. Standards that we know employers recognize and value. And again, I'll just refer, if I may, Mayor, to the comments we were having over lunch uh, when the Mayor was saying how much he would recognize uh, students from the Open University because of the nature of the way that they study and the com commitment and enthusiasm that they show to get to the end of their qualification. Over 30,000 businesses and organisations in the UK have chosen the Open University to train their staff. A government survey found that employers perceive part-time students like those at the OU to be hard-working, committed and requiring discipline and recognize the importance of supporting their employees' study aspirations. So, an OU qualification is something to be proud of, something well recognized and well respected. I hope that if you're hoping for a new job or a promotion, and I spoke to many people as they came across the stage who were hoping and working towards those, or entirely new careers in some cases, you can remind your employer of the nature of what you've achieved today. And if you're looking for some other things to tell people about the university, of which you are now a graduate, here are a few more facts which I hope they would find interesting and impressive. In 2013, the Open University led the way in digital innovation, once again, when we set up the UK's first platform for massive open online courses, free learning for the world, through an initiative called Future Learn. Since we set it up less than four years ago, it's gained over five million learners around the world. 
Many of you will be familiar with the Open University's partnership with the BBC. Whenever you see the OU Shield at the end of a TV programme, you can be sure there'll be something extra special to learn about. Uh, I don't know if you saw in the week, but a programme that the Open University made jointly with the BBC called Exodus actually won a BAFTA award. Which was, it was an amazing series where it charted the progress of uh, refugees from Syria finding their way to Europe. It effectively kind of gave people a mobile phone and recorded their journey. And some of my faculty colleagues were involved in making what I thought was a quite remarkable and extraordinary program. And we are doing more wonderful work with those who need our help the most. The OU is working with the British Council to deliver academic programs to displaced Syrian refugees who have left their homes and are temporarily settled in Jordan and the Lebanon. I'd like to talk briefly too about the research at the Open University. When we took part in the most recent UK exercise to assess university research, it showed that nearly three quarters of the Open University's research was marked as four or three star. That means either world leading or internationally excellent. And this isn't just any old research or arcane research. This is research that captures the public imagination. For example, we're incredibly proud of our contribution to recent space exploration. Last summer, the Open University was part of an international team who analyzed a wobble in space to discover a new exoplanet orbiting our nearest star. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Latin name of this exoplanet, but it's, it looks like a planet that might have the right conditions to support life, which, if it's true, could make one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. So as you can see, you're a member of a university that's a world leader in technology, in innovation, and in helping people to learn. And now that you've graduated, it's important to realize that you will always be a member of this university. Our movement of millions, a mission of one. Today, you join a community of open university alumni around the world. The OU has been by your side throughout your studies. Today, we give you a new commitment to stay with you on your lifelong journey. We'll share with you new opportunities to study. We'll help you develop your professional career. And as we learn more in our chosen field of study, we promise to share with you our latest research. Our motto on the crest right behind me on the screen is learn and live. And that is something that all Open University graduates embody as soon as they step back out from the building today into their busy lives. Because we are the people who open up the future of learning. Continue to learn. You've proven by coming across the stage today that you've all got great skills and great ability. One or two people said to me, I don't know how, they, how I did this. I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't think I'm very good. Trust me, if you've got across the stage with an Open University certificate, that is a remarkable and brilliant achievement. You can be very proud of it. Be confident that you can change the world around you for the better. You are now part of a vast network of people as extraordinary as you are. And when I say it's a vast network, I often reflect on the fact that whenever I speak to, a, if you this is particularly true if you work in the field of education, but it's true in general. If you talk to a group of 20 or 30 people, you will always find one that studied with the OU or their mum did or they tutored with the OU or something like that. It's always an amazing sense of the enormity and the fantasticness of the organisation. It's always very heartwarming. So carry on learning. Make your voice heard. You can join our alumni careers group on LinkedIn to share your professional experience and make new connections. You could try one of our free online courses on Open Learn or on Future Learn, which I just mentioned. Or, dare I say it, maybe when you've had pause to recover, you could sign up for another Open University course. Uh, I haven't actually brought enrollment forms with me, but I'm sure that could be arranged. 
You may have already been congratulated by members of our alumni team out in the foyer. If you didn't get the chance to meet them, you'll certainly hear from them soon. They'll be in touch to tell you about what the Alumni Association can offer, as well as ways to give back to your university through our Open Up the Future campaign, helping us to open up opportunity and lives for many more people. Incidentally, in two years' time, 2019, uh, following on from what Lord Blunkett was saying earlier, it is, of course, the 50th birthday of the Open University, and what a remarkable moment that will be to look back on the achievements of literally hundreds of thousands of people that have studied with the Open University since it was founded in 1969. When you leave today, you become an ambassador for the OU and all that it stands for. Its values of social justice, of equality, and education and knowledge to be open to all. Share your experience with others you know. Tell people what your OU journey has meant to you and what it could mean for them. I hope you might have seen some of our advertisements on the TV or in cinema or these days on the internet, of course. And I, I know you all saw our wonderful and inspiring film before the start of the ceremony this afternoon. And all of those bring to life so vividly the trials and jubilation of being an OU student. But we know that for potential students, a word of recommendation or actually explaining what it's like is better than any commercial. You're our best advert with your colleagues at work, with your friends and others, so we want you to be very proud of everything about this university when you say, I studied with the OU. In a few minutes, the proceedings will end and the ceremonial party will process out. Please do join us. That's me, honorary graduates, and all of the processing party outside the auditorium so we can again congratulate you in person. So as we come towards the end, I'm going to ask you for one last time, so just to make sure you really remember and enjoy this moment, I'm going to ask our graduates to stand and for everyone to here to join me in giving them a final huge round of applause. Okay, so graduates, please stand. So for the last time, congratulations, uh, enjoy the day, enjoy the moment, and reflect on your remarkable achievement. The proceedings of this degree ceremony have now been completed, and I now declare this meeting of congregation closed. Would all of those who are able to stand please do so?